Hello, welcome to Business. Multinational Business Group Group Indum has denied it has any involvement with gold dealership firm Men's Gold. A statement signed by the head of corporate affairs, Frank Osofori, said neither Group Indum nor its subsidiaries has made any investment with the gold dealership firm. Meanwhile, uh, Mr. Osofori has assured customers of GN Bank, um, now classified as a savings and loans company, that it is committed to delivering on its mandate. There's a clear difference between the two. So we cannot compare why we moved from a savings and loan to become a bank and now the current conditions to become a bank, a universal mm. bank. So that's what I'm saying, the two scenarios. And our clientele base are 1.2 million customers. It's not going to affect them. Mm. The person in Timpane, in Navongo, in Arilugu, in the northern region, in Jirapa, you know, all they care is they put their money there, they come down to South or they go to Omina or they go to Boahafo, Tichima, Beko, and they have access to it. When GN Bank came into the bank in the financial sector, mm. at that time the unbanked population was about 80%. Okay. With our 300 locations, we reduced it to over 50%. And we control about 20% of Ghana's banking retail outlet. Mm. So we've clearly done a human's job in the banking sector. In other news, hundreds of executives from across Africa and the rest of the world are gathering today for the Crystal Ball Africa 2019. The annual Pan-African Business Conference provides a forum for business people and professionals to take a close look at issues that will impact their businesses in the new year. The theme for 2019 is Transforming with the Transformation, and the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiyal, is expected to deliver the keynote address. Ahead of the ball... Joy Business has been speaking with the executive chairman of ABN David, organizers of the event, on what to expect. Crystal Ball is not a big money event. It's not a, an event for policymakers to come and tell us what they will do. Not at all. And, and that distinguishes us. It's a discussion of businessmen and policymakers right straight into the business on what exactly are you doing, what is going to happen from the police perspective. And businesses, what is happening and what do you do about it? What can you do to prevent the bad, the, 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 I mean, the, the bad effects and how can you take advantage? So it drills down to businesses. And every year we pick a particular sector to focus on what we call a side event. And let me let you into it. Each side event is christened the solutions looking for problems. Solutions? And looking for problems, yes. yes. So we always have a solutions looking for problem center. This year we've upgraded the solutions looking for problems to a solutions looking for problems village. Okay. So this year is focusing on SMEs, that's the solutions looking for problem village. Okay. It's a part of the site, it's a site conference. Okay. It's looking at SMEs. SMEs who have challenges to deal with finance, to deal with taxation, to deal with even understanding how to file common returns to register general, etc. So there will be a business clinic for them. Okay. In addition, they are being given the chance to exhibit their products because there are people who are looking for these products and are not aware because SMEs don't have the wherewithal to advertise, etc. Now, imagine as a farmer producing cassava five times bigger than the average size and improving yield by over 400 percent. Well, this has been made possible by the Crop Research Institute with the introduction of the Banchehema variety, a high yielding and disease resistant variety. With Ghana being the sixth largest producer worldwide, the innovation can improve its rankings. Karin Dodu reports. Research fellow in charge of the cassava breeding program, Professor Joe Maino, explains that although Ghana is one of the largest producers in the world, the local variety commonly grown has low yields, therefore leaving room for more. And you know, in Ghana, most of us eat fufu three times a day. <laughs> and so we, we have to improve upon our local varieties. And our local varieties, we know they are good for fufu, but the yields are very low because of the African cassava mosaic. So what we normally do is we collect these um, germplasm from different parts of the country, bring them to crop research here, and then we marry them with our improved varieties. Okay. We do crosses, we call hybridization, and then we introduce the good attributes that are in the materials to 
the, the, the local ones. By experimenting with other varieties from other countries, improved varieties are generated for the farmers to use. However, Professor Menu explains that even with improved varieties for planting, farmers need to practice good planting habits to really benefit from the effectiveness of the improved variety. You see, most farmers think for cassava you can plant it anywhere, and so they produce their cassava in the worst fields. Yes, cassava will do well even in conditions where the other crops like maize, uh, rice and other crops will fail. But if you want good production, now it's for commercial purposes and so you should use the best fields that you would use for your other crops like maize, cowpeas and all those things. The cassava breeding program is one of the over 10 breeding programs under the institute. Rice, maize, cowpea, soya beans, granules and other tuber breeding programs allow the institute to multiply seed samples generated by them. Well, catch the full report on the marketplace. Moving on, Ghana continues to inch closer to becoming an aviation hub as domestic carrier Unity Airlines says it plans to provide chartered flights. This comes as the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority encourages domestic carriers to explore new routes and services as the domestic aviation industry welcomes new entrants. Speaking to Joy Business, the head of commercial, Roger Alote, said chartered flights offer an avenue for more revenue. We started off with charter services um, on the 20th of December. We carried passengers from Kenya into Kumasi and back on Sunday. And um, we have a couple of charter operations lined up. We would be using the Wednesdays, which are supposed to be maintenance days, for charters. But why the chartered service? Do you believe that there's that market? Do you believe that there's something to tap from the chartered service? Yeah, as I indicated, we are doing scheduled flights and we intend to do charter flights on days when the aircraft comes directly out of maintenance. And um, yes, we know that the size of the aircraft is ideal and would we'll be making a bit from charter services and it's a niche that nobody has as yet gone into. So we want to capitalize on that in addition to our regular services and then see how it goes. But then there is a lot of demand for charter services. It's mostly with the corporates, but we'll be having groups, churches, and all sorts of institutions also coming in. Maybe they want to fly as a team, hoteliers club, wanting to go for a function in Tamale, and you have about 17 or so, and they have a fixed departure date and a fixed return date. So those are the things I want to look at in addition to our scheduled services. Well, that's all for business. Uh, George Adujina will have the latest in sports with Bernice. Do stay tuned.